So what do MKBHD and DHRME have in common? They're both five letter acronyms. No, we both said yes to the same product. Goedendag, we're DHRME. Don't hesitate, review my electronics. All right, let's first react to MKBHD's review, shall we? And it's basically a seven inch touchscreen that becomes the infotainment system in your car. It's clearly meant to be for older cars that don't have an infotainment system. That's right, newer cars generally have their own proprietary infotainment system that connects to your phone, or they have an implementation of either Apple CarPlay and or Android Auto. So say you're not a big fan of propping up your phone on a phone holder or following your navigation or listening to music through earbuds, then CarPuride might be a good alternative. It offers a bigger and brighter display with an easy to use interface, which is made for driving. Here's the price, $250. Now, depending on your budget, this might be a lot or not so much money, but to give you a bit of perspective, generally getting something like this built into your car will easily cost two to four times this price. And some of those units don't even support both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but just one of the two. CarPuride supports both. 250 bucks gets you the unit with a backup camera, like Marquez said, but for 20 bucks less, you don't get that camera. That's the one we have. It has some pros and cons, right? So you do have to plug it in both into power and into the audio jack in your car. If it has one, there are other methods of connecting it to your car as well. Well, what are those other ways, Marquez? So yes, the CarPuride is ideal for older cars which support a 12 volt charger and an aux input. The other options that Marquez didn't mention for outputting audio from the device is twofold. You can have the audio come from the CarPuride device itself, or you can transmit the audio signal through FM radio frequencies. Since my car doesn't support an aux input, I ended up trying both of these alternatives. And spoiler alert, they both are not great. Using the speaker of the device itself sounded bad, and the second option of using FM transmission has its downsides too. You are essentially trying to transmit over open air frequencies and all the disadvantages it comes with. So depending on where you are, there could be radio frequency interference and the quality is just tinny and not very clean. Now, don't get us wrong, they both work perfectly fine and the setup was easy. They just aren't as great as having an audio input in your car. One tip though, if you are setting this up with FM transmission, then make sure to go into settings on the CarPuride and turn off the device speaker, else you will not hear any audio come through anywhere. Suction cup mount to put it up in your dash. So sucking or mounting, there are two ways to use this ride. The suction cup is one way you can install this. Stuck to the windshield, that's the way we initially set it up. But you can also use the same suction mount to put it on the dash like Marquez did, which we also did afterwards. There is a bit of sticky material on the suction mount and we were a little bit skeptical whether it would stay in place, but it sucks hard. We had a hard time trying to get it off of the window. The advantage of putting it on the dash is that it's much closer to you and in arm's reach. The other way you can mount this is using a static mount with an adhesive, but that will be a little bit more permanent. That's why CarPuride has included a second adhesive sticker in the box. On that same static mount, you get holes if you really want to drill and screw this onto your dash. Another advantage of the suction mount is that you have an adjustable arm, so you can adjust how far it is away from you as well as a swivel head to change the angle. Oh, and you will not have an adjustable arm nor a swivel head if you use the static mount. On the user manual here, it shows that it works with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Isn't that great? Both are supported and both worked really well. You can even set up an Android phone and an iPhone. Both will work without having to disconnect or forget a previous device. You can use CarPlay or Android Auto either wirelessly or wired. Wired is the easiest since you just plug it in and it charges your phone at the same time. But wireless was very easy as well. You just find the car puride in the Bluetooth device list and connect to it. Now every time you step into the car, it will connect automatically, as long as you leave the default settings as they are. 
But when you're done, you will need to turn the car puree right off though, at least in my car, else it'll drain your car's battery. That's another thing, the device has no battery on board. Some previous models came with a Type-C port so you could plug in a power bank, but that's no longer supported. When asked why, Carpyrite said there were users who used low powered plugs in the car and complained that it didn't work. So Carpyrite decided to go back to a normal DC plug. Low tech users always gotta ruin it for the rest of us, eh? You don't have to buy a whole new car, you get most of the functionality, you can listen to music from your phone. You actually get a lot of functionality. Besides Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you can also use Apple AirPlay to cast content onto the screen. The downside is that you need to forget the CarPlay connection from your iPhone before you can use AirPlay. Kind of inconvenient. Did it work though? No, it didn't. We did everything Carpurite told us to, but no luck. What kind of worked was the auto link feature. It essentially mirrors your phone onto the screen. For Android, you need to install an app from the Play Store first. When you tested it with the Pixel 6a, you could see the phone's display and it was reasonably responsive. But when we played a video, there was no audio. On an iPhone, there was audio, but the video would lag at times. So neither AirPlay nor the mirroring features were really much to write home about. Apart from those main features, there are a few more worth mentioning. There's a 16 band EQ with presets and the ability to make custom ones. Does it work? Yes, it does. Should you use the loud toggle? No, you shouldn't. It made the bass sound very distorted and not pleasant at all. The other feature is the simple Bluetooth for calling. So if you don't need all that fancy CarPlay and Android Auto, then this works. Just connect your phone by Bluetooth and you can receive and make calls. This same feature also supports Bluetooth music. But if you just need that, then why bother with this device in the first place? There are far cheaper alternatives out there. Anyway, let's hear some samples of the microphone, shall we? We compared it to the OLED dance for reference because those are the ones I generally use in the car. All right guys, this is the mic test on the CarPuride W707. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle. <laughs> Testing, one, two, three. Popsicle, ice, ice, ice. Alright guys, this is a mic test on the Ola Dance Open Wearable Stereo. Pop pop popsicle, ice ice icicle, test test testing, one, two, three. Pop pop popsicle, ice ice icicle, test test testing, one, two, three. Wow, weren't they incredible? bad and this was after I moved the carpy right closer by removing it from the windshield and mounting it on the dash. Phone calls are for me and probably many others a crucial feature for a piece of tech in the car. With these microphones it's just not doable. The people on the other end of the call had to put their phones on speaker, crank up the volume to max and put it to their ear and still had difficulty understanding me. Unacceptable in our books. If you're still heavily invested in getting the W707 for phone calls, then there is a port for an external microphone or just using your Bluetooth earbuds. And then you can also play media from a good old USB drive or an SD card. Playing music files and showing images didn't have any issues. Playing video on the other hand didn't work. We got an error that the file type wasn't supported. We checked with Carpyride and they confirmed that the file type we were testing was supported. They suggested another USB drive we tried, but that didn't work either. What's new about the W707 model compared to older models is that they've added the touch capacitive buttons on the left side for home, volume controls, voice assistant, and a back button. Definitely a good addition and we find ourselves using mostly the home and the back buttons. Voice assistant could be summoned using the wake word and volume was changed on the car itself. In the settings, you can do some basic configurations like changing the language, the colors of the buttons and what should happen when you connect your phone by wire. You can have it start up Apple CarPlay or Android Auto depending on which phone you use, but you can also have it start up screen mirroring instead. You basically just have to face the challenge of like how exactly do you connect it to your older car. That is definitely an important challenge. Like we mentioned at the start, if your car supports an aux input, then perfect. If it doesn't, then do realize that you're compromising on audio quality by using FM transmission or the speaker on the car right itself. But these aren't the only challenges you'll need to consider. There will be cables running down the side of your dash, at least one to power the car ride, and potentially another for the audio cable. And if you plan to use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay wired, then that's another one. So be prepared to do some cable management. 
Then, speaking of the 12 volt power cable, you better hope you or other passengers don't accidentally touch or look at it the wrong way, because then your carpy ride is out. You'll need to fix the loose connection and wait for it to boot back up. It didn't happen all too often in our usage, but something to take note of. And of course, this depends strongly on where the 12 volt socket is in your car and also how secure the fit is. There is a handy LED on the plug to be able to see if it's powered on or not. Installing the screen on the arm is a bit finicky since you have to line up the hinges correctly. You get better at it with time, but let's be honest, there's only one solution. Magnets, guys, magnets. I am Magneto, master of magnet. <laughs> Once you're done, CarPureRide suggests you remove it and store it away to prevent any overheating by leaving it in the car. There's that, but there's also the chance of someone wanting to break into your car to get the new piece of tech they heard MKBHD is rated 8 on 10. Our point is basically that you'll need to be okay every time with plugging and unplugging and mounting and unmounting and stowing and un a couple of final gripes we had with the device. The connectivity with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto was fine either wired or wireless, but there were times when we were adjusting the settings or toggling between screen mirroring and CarPlay or Android Auto that the carpool ride would just hang and become unresponsive. The only solution was to unplug it and plug it in again. Mind you, if you've just set it up and don't plan to fiddle between different settings or use the subpar mirroring feature, then you'll be fine. What we weren't really fine with was how low the volume of the voice guidance was for navigation. We tried with Google Maps, Waze, and even Apple Maps. Subscribe for the courage to test Apple Maps. And we even made sure the volume within the app settings on CarPlay or Android Auto, as well as on our phone, was set to max. But no luck. I mean, it's not unusable if you've got the volume for music relatively high. But if you turn down the volume for whatever reason, you have no way to keep voice guidance on at a higher volume level. We seriously hope CarPureRide can improve this. And if CarPureRide or Apple CarPlay or Android Auto decides to release an update, you'll need to manually install this on the W707 unit. You can ask CarPureRide support for it and you'll need to copy it to a USB flash drive and follow a few steps to get it updated. Something to keep in mind in case you thought it would be easily done over the air. It's not all bad. Like we said, for the price you're getting an easy entry into Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you can avoid expensive built-in solutions if you don't want to spend so much. Of course, it'll be cleaner and better integrated into your car, but it's always a trade-off. Many newer cars with built-in solutions can be quite restrictive. They either only support Android Auto or only Apple CarPlay. Sometimes they only work wired and not wirelessly. On the CarPlay ride, you get everything. We also like how you get different ways to connect audio to your car, despite the fact that having an aux input in your car is still the most ideal option. The different mounting options included in the box are nice. You can use a suction cup with an adjustable arm or you can go for a static mount with an adhesive sticker or affix it with screws. We like the adjustability of the telescopic arm with a swivel head. You can really dial in the best position. The 7 inch display itself is sharp and bright. It can also automatically adjust brightness depending on ambient light. Or you can also choose to override it manually. We kept it on auto and it was very readable in direct sunlight too. But still, I won't be using it after this review and the reasons are quite simple. Firstly, my car doesn't have an aux input so I can only get audio through the CarPureRide device itself or through FM transmission. Both are bad in terms of sound quality. So it's a downgrade compared to the Bluetooth unit I got set up in my car already. Second, the lead time for getting into and out of the car is slightly longer. There is the hassle of having to stow away the device every time so my car doesn't get broken into or the risk of the carpet ride overheating. Third, the volume for turn-by-turn -turn instructions just isn't very loud, and it is impossible to customize the volume levels for navigation and for music separately. And finally, the microphones are not Fachmann material. When I'm in the car, I tend to make a lot of phone calls. So bad microphones are a deal breaker. The carpet ride is perfect if you have an older car or even a newer car without a good infotainment system with a large and responsive touchscreen display. If you want Apple CarPlay or Android Auto or the flexibility of both, if you share your car with your partner, for example, and they happen to use another phone, if you have a 12 volt power socket in the car and an aux input for the best sound quality you can get on this device, if 
you don't want to spend lots of money to get a new system built into your car. And especially if you're an iPhone user, since you can't get a CarPlay app from the App Store. Android on the other hand does have Android Auto as an app, so you can technically get a cheap phone holder and use a lot of what Android Auto has to offer straight from your phone. You've been having a pure ride in the car. And we've been DHRME. Namaste. Namaste. Carpu ride, caru pride. Carp ride, car, carp, carp, carp. Think about the fish, carp.